Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to be looking at the Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series Brawlers Kit action figure. The Jazzwares Legendary Series figures are 6 inch scale Fortnite figures, and the Brawlers are 7 inch scale. Kit here is a little baby kitten on top of a giant robot body. His father is Meow Schools, he's another one from the Brawlers line. You would earn the skin of Kit in Chapter 2, Season 3, if you have the Battle Pass and hit level 60. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging here. As you can see at the top, Epic Games, Fortnite, ages 8 plus, Legendary Series Brawlers. It says he transforms. I believe that is going to activate his built-in emote called Go Cat Go. Going further down, 38 points of articulation, kit, 5 pieces, special feature weapons, and here he is posed up from the game. Here are all of his accessories. We've got Kit, we've got his robot body, we've got the double barrel shotgun, the grappler, and then his dual wielding pickaxes. These are the power class harvesting tools. One side says Fortnite, not much going on. Other side, same thing. At the bottom, there's a bunch of credits, and there is a barcode in case that helps anybody. On the back side, here's Kit dancing on top of his body. Kit proudly following in his father's paw prints. And here are a bunch of other Jazz Wars Fortnite figures you should check out. So I got my figure from Amazon.com. He was selling out real quick. I kept seeing him for $24.99, hitting Add to Cart, and it was sold out before I could even get him. So on my phone, I just kept a tab open with that website. Every time I checked my phone for a text message or email, I would just refresh the site. I was able to get him a couple days ago, and here he is. So with no further ado, let's open him up. All right, now that we got this figure out of the package, here he is with all his accessories laid out. He comes with the grappler, the double barrel shotgun, and the power claws harvesting tool, or dual wielding pickaxes. And frankly, his entire robot body is an accessory to Kit. Kit is a little kitten, small orange calico cat on the top. So let's go ahead and look at his body. So Kit sits on top, not super secure in there. There are some little pegs, little holes in his feet. Looks like he's kind of driving a motorcycle the way he's gripping the handlebars. Looks like his robot body was made from a bunch of junk. Mismatched colors on either side. Looks like it's got an insane amount of articulation. I see just joints, double joints, swivels all over this thing. Little feedback, my guy's a little bit loose on that leg, making it pretty hard to stand up. Another little bit of feedback, you can see some orange that bled onto the blue or black side of his face. A little annoying, that's what you get when you buy online, but I'm very happy to have this guy. He's got a wheel in the center, does not rotate, I really thought it would. Disappointed with that a little bit. That was one of the first things I thought when I realized they are going to make a kit skin. I really hope that wheel actually turns, and it does not. You can see the sort of exhaust in the back, or his tail lights. As I understand in the game, when he walks backwards, these are lit up. And when he goes forward, this light can be on sometimes. Looks like he has a traditional finger articulation. Just looks really cool. All the different mixed, mishmashed parts on this guy. Very cool. He's trying to be big like his dad, Meowth Skulls. And then, here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removable parts detached. And I wanted to look at the actual kit figure as well. This is going to be the smallest Fortnite figure they've ever made. Looks pretty cute. Little small little kitten. Tail up. He's got a little bit of articulation. His arms go up and down to grip the handlebars. And his head can rotate so he can look to the side as he's riding his giant robot body. Beyond that, it's kind of humorous. This guy's in the Brawler's line, these 7-inch scale figures. And this guy's probably not even an inch tall. Now let's check out his accessories. And let's start off with his dual-wielding pickaxes. Notice I left his body in there, because technically the body is an accessory to the small kit. Now let's look at his harvesting tool, or more commonly referred to as a pickaxe. These are the Power Claws, which is a very appropriate name for a cat's weapon. These things are identical. It's got what appears to be a buzzsaw at the top. And just like the wheel in his torso, 
I thought this thing would rotate or spin, but no, it's one solid piece. I think they missed the mark there. Going further down, the handle, it's gray. Got a little silver tip here. Brown part in the middle. It looks good. It's pretty cool. I like dual wielding pickaxes. Just wish they went the extra step and allowed this thing to spin. Here he is holding the pickaxes. And then Kit hears a strange noise coming from behind the door and decides to chop his way in there. Chop, chop, chop. And Kit found out what that noise was behind the door. He exposed the chest, get ready to get some loot, and he got some brick along the way. And in this chest, he got some boogie bombs, a half pot, and a double barrel shotgun. One cool thing about these figures is that their accessories are customizable and interchangeable between the figures, just like in the game. In the game, you can customize your skin, add pretty much any pickaxe, glider, and back bling you want, and make your own favorite combination. Here are a bunch of different Jazzwares figures holding each other's pickaxes, showing you they are interchangeable between the Jazzwares line. And if you wanted to take it one step further, both the Jazzwares and McFarlane line have interchangeable pickaxes. Here are a couple of Jazzwares figures holding McFarlane pickaxes and a couple of McFarlane figures holding Jazzwares pickaxes, just giving you even more interchangeable and customizable options. And then speaking of back blings, this figure does not come with a back bling, and I wish he did. It's not that big of a deal, but if you really want to give this guy a back bling, he does have a hole in his back that can accommodate one. Take any of your Jazzwares back blings, and you put it into the hole here. Another Jazzwares back bling kind of interchangeable, just like all the other parts. Now one unfortunate thing, if you were to take a McFarlane back bling, even though it connects the same way to the back, the peg is just too thin and it will not stay in there. Now let's look at this grappler. This accessory was originally released in a Fortnite weapons pack that only made it out overseas in the UK. I was able to get one. This thing is a little bit too large for the figures as well. You can see it's kind of got a purplish color at the bottom, green transparent at the top, got the little plunger at the front. This thing does actually function. Press the trigger below, it shoots out, it's got a string so you're not going to lose it. Pretty cool feature. And here's Kit's grappler next to the one that was in the Fortnite weapons pack below. Exact same sculpt, but a little bit different color. And here it is next to the McFarlane version. I think the McFarlane version is sized properly compared to the figures. Here he is holding his grappler. And then, as he's grappling on to the second story, now let's look at his shotgun. This is the double barrel. His is colored in gold and black. Has annoying writing at the bottom. This was also featured in that Fortnite weapons pack that was only available overseas. They all had an action feature. This one can fold down and get reloaded. Pretty cool. And here it is, next to the original one that came in the weapons pack. Exact same mold, but a different wrap. And here it is, next to the McFarlane version of the double barrel. And here are all the different shotguns that Jazzwares has released in their Fortnite Legendary line. And here are all the different shotguns McFarlane has released. Now we have Kit holding the shotgun. And his last accessory to check out is his giant robot body, although this is actually most of the figure. This thing looks like it was made from a bunch of junk or the junkyard. It looks like it's made with mixed match different pieces. You can see the colors don't match up. We've got the shoulder armor up here, up here. His elbow, if you'd even call it that, yellow on this side, dark green on this side. Just looks like he's made from scrap of the junkyard, and that's kind of where Kit hangs out right now. He's got this wheel in here, and I did complain earlier I wanted to rotate. In the game, it turned as you're running, and it was really cool. But the way they designed this, it does make you kind of wonder how they could execute that. The torso is connected through here. There's really no way it could rotate. Now, it does have an action feature, and that's it can do that emote. And frankly, I'm not going to lie, I don't really like that emote that much in the game. But you can take this guy apart, and then you want to... It takes a lot of work to transform him. Legs need to go up. They kind of go down over the front. There's this little hole back here. 
and this peg on the back of a seat will connect into that and it doesn't work very good. I mean, you can see, you put them down here, it just does not line up. You have to like literally pull this thing back, shove it in there. So in my opinion, poor execution. It's often a moat I don't really like, and it's kind of dumb. And to add insult to injury, try to put Kit into there, and it doesn't fit, so you gotta pull it back even further to shove Kit in there. And when you finally got that done, I mean, it looks okay and kind of like the game. In the game, his arms would go up, which is actually kind of hard to do with this. Yeah, so the armor's going to push him back. You can kind of rotate the armor, maybe get out of the way, put his arm up. Overall, in my opinion, just poor execution. Doesn't work very good. And the more you bend this thing back, it's going to bend it. It's going to end up with white stress marks, and it might eventually even break off. I think they could have done this a whole lot better. Here's more or less how it looked in the game. He's got his legs hanging over his shoulders. He's got his arms sticking up. But the execution is just horrible. First of all, in the game, his hands would stick up like this, and they're rocking the rock and roll style devil horns. He should have come with some alternate hands if they're going to do this emote. His legs, they can dangle over his shoulders, no problem there. But his sort of crotch area does not leave enough room for Kit. Putting Kit in there took me at least 10 different tries. He kept popping back out. It is not done well at all. I was really excited for this figure. And he looks pretty good. But between the fact that he can't stand and they really butchered this whole transformation part, really, really is disappointing. And yes, it really would have been nice if the wheel actually rotated. In the game, when he uses the emote, he sort of drives around. But honestly, just looking at the figure and the way it's designed in the game, I don't see any way you could actually make the wheel rotate and connect his torso properly. Would have been really cool if they found a way, though. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at all of Kid's accessories, now let's check out some other accessories and vehicles you can use to enhance these Jazzwares figures. Here's Kid driving on a McFarlane quad crasher. I was actually surprised and pleased how well Kid's body fit onto the vehicle. He's got his dad and the obstacles on the back. And here he is, riding on the back of it. I will say, with how hard it is to stand this guy up, any of these poses are a real pain. And here he is, getting pushed around in the McFarlane shopping cart. And here, pushing around the obstacles. Then, here's his dad pushing him around in the shopping cart, little kid style. Here he is next to a chest. This chest is actually intended for the smaller Jazzwares line. The 4 inch line. You may think to yourself, how could that chest possibly be for the smaller figures, as it's too large even for the 6 and 7 inch line? Well, this chest wasn't supposed to be scale accurate. It's an accessory pack. You'd buy this chest, open it up, get a couple guns and some building material. But since chests are such a huge part of the game, I was happy to have something at least remotely in scale with the figures. And here he is, opening up a loot llama. This llama is obviously not for McFarlane or Chazwares, as it's simply a stuffed animal. But llamas have become sort of a staple of the game, and just like the chest, I was happy to have a llama that's at least remotely in scale with the figures. Now let's check him out with McFarlane's glider and launch pad combo set. Here he is with it fully assembled. Here he is, getting ready to jump off and glide away. And here he is on the McFarlane glider. He doesn't exactly attach in the traditional way, but you're able to fudge it and make it work. And here are a whole bunch of other Fortnite accessories you can use with Kit. These came with previous Jazzwares releases. And then, holding a can of spray paint, getting ready to tag the wall behind him, just like in the game. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at the figure, his accessories, and some other accessories you can use for him, now let's check out his height. Kit here, from top to bottom, is sitting at about 1.25 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 3 centimeters. And then Kit, in his robot body, sitting at about 7.0 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18 and a half centimeters. And I was thinking to myself, Kit is the absolute smallest character in the Fortnite game. But no, then I remembered Leviathan. Now let's look at his articulation, and let's start off with little Kit here. Both his arms, they go up and down. And then his head can rotate around. Pretty much all he can do. And now let's look at a robot body's articulation. 
So you got a little kit on top. He can't move really at all, just with his arms and his head. He attaches through these little pegs onto the holes on his feet. He can't fall off very easily. If you hold him upside down, it doesn't really fall off. He's a very light figure. So looking at the rest of the articulation, shoulders here, they can rotate forward and back. They would really benefit to be able to rotate upward, but they just simply cannot. His armor, it can rotate to get out of the way. If you have the arms up and kid up there. He's got double jointed elbows, a joint here and here. Here it is completely outstretched. And then going in. His wrist, it can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. And then he has some finger articulation to hold his weapons. His torso here, it can rotate. It can also disconnect. This operates as a waist swivel. Then his legs, got kind of a ball joint here, goes out only a little bit. You can go forward as much as you want, back pretty much as much as you want. Then he's got a swivel above the knee. You can go forward and back, double jointed, a joint here and here. Another swivel below. And then it's got sort of ball joint in his ankle. Go forward and back, tilt and rock and their toe articulation. Here he is in an alleyway with another alley cat. They're both pulling some fish out of the trash cans. And that other cat gets greedy, decides to take both the fish, gets on the sidewalk, starts hissing at Kit. Kit gets scared and runs away. And a frustrated Kit, who's tired of getting picked on, decides to go to the junkyard and is looking for pieces to build his robot body. Then he goes back in there and scares the hell out of that cat. And then he's all proud of himself, doing his emote down the street. And this is the best you're going to get with this transforming ability. And here he is at home, chilling with his dad, Meowskulls, watching some TV. You can see they have cats absolutely everywhere there. And here he is, giving kids some warm milk before bed. And this is what happens when he gets in trouble. His dad picks him up by the tail. Now let's check him out next to some other action figures, starting off with some other Fortnite figures. First of all, here he is next to his dad, Meowskulls. And here he is next to the entire Brawlers 7-inch series. They did announce three more figures, Cyclo, Brutus, and Shadow Kid. Looking very forward to those. Then, here he is next to a bunch of recently released Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Series 6-inch figures. And here he is with my entire Jazzwares Fortnite Legendary Collection. The only ones I don't have are Recruit Jonesy and Dark Voyager. And of course, we also know about the three upcoming Brawlers. Then, here he is next to my entire McFarlane Fortnite Collection. These Brawlers are 7-inch scale like the McFarlane figures. And frankly, this is a scale that I wish all the Jazzwares figures were. So all my Fortnite figures would be able to fit in together in one huge collection. And here are all the Fortnite figures that I bought multiples of. You may ask yourself, why so many? Well, I got all four different versions of the wild card to make a Royal Flesh Gang for my DC action figures. I got four of each of the Skull Trooper releases to use a Scarecrow Henchman in my Batman world. And then I got two Crack Shots for Toyman Henchman in my DC action figure world and four Rebel Raiders and four Night Hairs for my Header Henchmen in my Batman world. A lot of different diverse uses for these Fortnite figures. And here he is in a huge Battle Royale with all of my Fortnite figures. As you can see, they're all shooting each other, driving, launching explosives, sniping, healing, Gliding, getting loot, trying to see who can get the most kills, and more importantly, who can get the win. And here's Kit transformed, driving around the streets in the Fortnite world. Now let's check him out next to some different cat themed action figures. Here he is with my entire Catwoman collection. And here he is, next to a couple of Catman figures. Then, next to some Cheetah figures. And here, next to Bronze Tiger. Then, next to Wildcat. 
and here next to a tigress figure and here he is next to a whole bunch of different cats and here's kit next to my cat that looks a little bit like kit in orange calico now let's check him out next to some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with here he is next to some DST or Diamond Select toys and here he is next to some McFarlane toys then next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures and here next to some NECA figures then with some Mattel wrestling figures now let's check him out next to some of his Jazzwares brothers here he is, next to some Jazzwares All Elite Wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112 Cloth Soft Goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, next to some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And finally, here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. So overall, Kid is a very cool and unique, crazy character in the game. I remember when I first saw his skin, a little small kitten controlling this giant robot body with a rotating wheel inside. Doesn't even make sense. Definitely suits the game because they have so much crazy stuff going on. I was very excited when I found out I was able to get this guy. And then when I found out they're making a figure of him, I was even more excited. I could just imagine the wheel and all the different robotic parts how crazy it's going to be. And what they gave us, yes, it looks good, but they really dropped the ball at function. The transforming piece is all screwed up. They really botched the execution there. And the fact that mine has such a hard time standing up is extremely frustrating. His right leg is a little bit loose, and hopefully that's unique to my figure. So overall, it's a mixed feeling of happiness and disappointment. The disappointment because his action features are jacked up and it's so hard to get this guy to stand. He literally probably fell over at least 40 times while making this video. So overall, if I rate this guy, I think I'm going to give him a 6.5 out of 10. If he didn't have a couple of the problems, particularly standing, and if they got his transforming right, he probably would be a good 8 out of 10. I really like the way this guy looks. I have no problem with the actual kit. It's just the robotic body has some serious issues. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.